Over the last few episodes, we have introduced various metaprogramming optimization techniques to drastically improve the compilation time of our meta functions. We benchmarked different implementations of a remove if meta function and found our best performing implementation, the so called defaults implementation, to be the fastest one by a huge margin for bigger inputs. However, we concluded at the end of the previous episode that this implementation is not that well suited for smaller inputs. Today, we are going to discuss one last optimization technique that will combine the big input performance of the default implementation with lightning fast performance on smaller inputs. We'll start with a recap of the default implementation and why it performs poorly on small inputs. There are timestamps in the description if you want to skip ahead. We've been demonstrating the different optimization techniques by using them on a remove if meta function. The function takes a predicate and a type list as input and then removes all the types that match the predicate. We created this remove if function by using a combination of a transform and a join function. First, the transform function transforms the input as follows. Every type that matches the predicate, and hence should be removed, is replaced by an empty list. Every type that does not match the predicate, and hence should remain, is replaced by a single element list containing the type. We then use a join function to merge all these lists into our final output list, which now contains only the types that did not match the predicate. Upon analyzing this implementation, we found that the transform function was very fast in terms of compilation time, and that the bottleneck was clearly the join function. As such, we focused our optimization efforts on the join function. The latest and greatest of this optimization is the defaults implementation, which makes smart use of default arguments to significantly reduce the number of type instantiations. As discussed in episode 10, this is important as type instantiations are very costly in terms of compilation time due to the memory allocation the compiler needs to perform. The idea behind the defaults implementation is simple. Create a join with a large number of default arguments, join 1024 in this case, provide an implementation of this join 1024, which immediately computes the resulting type without any recursion or other additional type instantiations. That's right, we are writing out how to combine over a thousand parameters into a single output list. Then lastly, we create a real join function that is going to use our join 1024 to join the input lists in batches of 1024 lists. Because we have default arguments specified for the template parameters, this join can of course also be used with fewer than 1024 lists. The major advantage of such an implementation is that you only need to instantiate a new type for every 1024 lists passed to it, which makes it super fast when processing big inputs. The disadvantage is that these implementations are quite costly as they involve over a thousand parameters. And as such, you always pay for those 1024 parameters. Even if you just want to join two lists and 1022 parameters are hence the default empty list. With the technique we'll discuss today, we are going to combine the advantages of fast tracking, where the number of arguments of the type instantiations is proportional to the input size, with the speed of the defaults technique to create an implementation of the join algorithm that is lightning fast both on small and big inputs. For this new implementation, which I'll call selection, we again create a join n meta function to join up to n types. But this time, we don't just create one function, instead we create multiple functions for different powers of four. We'll have a join four to join up to four types, join 16 for up to 16 types, join 64, 256, and lastly the join 1024. These join n style functions are exactly the same as the ones you would create for a defaults implementation. They use default arguments to accept up to n lists to join. For the main join function, we are going to implement a selection mechanism that will allow it to use the most appropriate join n function for the size of its input. If you are past 800 lists, it will use join 1024, and hence it should have the same performance as the defaults implementation. However, if it is passed only five lists, it will use join 16, as that is the smallest join that accepts five arguments. Similarly, if it is passed 1100 lists, it will first use join 1024 to merge the first 1024 lists. After this, there are 77 lists remaining, the already merged list and the 76 other lists. It will hence recurse and use the join 256 to merge those remaining lists into the final output list. In the end, the number of type instantiations that will be used 
is the same as the number of instantiations that's used for the defaults implementation. But the number of arguments involved in these instantiations will now be proportional to the size of the input. Since the cost of a type instantiation depends on the number of arguments, we expect to see a better compilation time when the selection implementation is used for small inputs. So, how do we create such a selection mechanism for our join function? The first solution that comes to mind might be to use our if meta function a couple of times to check the size of our input and dispatch to the appropriate join n function. This, however, does not work, as to instantiate a type, the compiler has to instantiate whatever it inherits from. And as such, even the if branches which are not taken should be syntactically correct. Which means that if you would try to call such a join with, for example, 10 lists, the compiler will complain that join 4 does not accept 10 arguments. We could work around this by adding a layer of indirection, like a dispatcher meta function which accepts an arbitrary number of template parameters and then invokes the actual join end function. But this, of course, adds an extra type instantiation which defeats the whole purpose of our optimization. So let's forget about using the if meta function and look at a different approach. First, we introduce a helper meta function that will make it easier for us to select the correct join n based on an integer value. Join select is a template accepting a single integer as template parameter. Now we are going to make a change to our join n functions. Where before we had differently named join n functions like join 4 and join 16, we will now simply name all of them join and define them as members of different specializations of the join select template. This allows us to select the correct join using only an integer value. Note that since join select does not depend on the actual list that are joined, these specializations will only be instantiated the first time join is called with a number of lists that's in their range. For example, if the first join call is on 10 lists, it will use join select 2, which leads to a type instantiation. But if we later want to join 8 completely different lists, this will again use join select 2, which is now a lightning fast lookup of a memwise type. As such, we can safely ignore these type instantiations for all practical applications of join. With join select in place, we now introduce a const expert function to compute the value for the correct join select specialization. By using a const expert function, we avoid the need for extra type instantiations. You can use a const expert if statement, or if you do not have C17 available, you can even use the ternary operator as shown here to create a C11 compatible implementation. Implementing the join function is now quite simple. To compute the joint list, we simply call the join select specialization for the value returned by select join size. So if join is called with 50 lists, select join size will return 3, which will result in a call to join select 3, which takes care of joining up to 4 to the power 3, in other words, 64 lists. Similarly, we invoke the other join select calls when the number of inputs is in their range. Which leads me to the last thing, which I did not go into yet. The case where our input is more than 1024 lists. As you can see from the code, in this case, select join size will return 6. So we'll have to make sure we define a join select 6 that invokes join 1024 on the first 1024 lists and then calls the main join function to recurse on this new list and the remaining list. And that's all that's needed to implement a selection mechanism that does not use any additional type instantiations. Let's see how the implementation performs. First, we'll look at our standard benchmark, where we call remove if on 1024 and 2048 inputs, which in turn calls our join implementation with the same number of lists. I left the other implementations in there to see the improvements we've made on our metaprogramming journey. To make a fair comparison, I only implemented selection up to join 64, like the default implementation used on our benchmarks. As such, we expect the selection implementation to perform similar to the default implementation for inputs larger than 16, as at this point, it starts using the same join64 function as the default implementation. Looking at this graph, that seems to be the case. But let's look at some bigger inputs to make sure. Now indeed, we clearly see that the performance of the defaults and the selection implementation is pretty much the same. The difference is only a few percent. In other words, the compilation impact of adding the selection mechanism is minimal. And it will allow us to further scale up the number of default arguments used, without having to pay for it when using small inputs. So let's see if we can quantify this performance improvement on small inputs as well. Since our implementations are so fast, it's impossible to accurately measure the compilation time of a single call with a small input. So we'll need to create a new benchmark for this. I created this benchmark 
where the remove if algorithm is called a thousand times with different lists of length three. If you are new to the series and are curious how we accurately compute this compilation time, check out episode 10. There's a link in the description. Now we see a clear difference. Selection 64 is 35% faster than the default algorithm on small inputs. Again, the benchmarks confirm the theory discussed in episode 10. If we look at the results for an implementation that goes up to 1024 arguments, we see that this difference becomes much bigger. This really shows the power of the selection algorithm, as it's fast for both small and large inputs. The selection optimization was the last optimization which I wanted to discuss for simple meta functions like the join function. This is the bleeding edge of high performance meta programming and the fastest possible implementation. With the knowledge of all the optimization techniques we discussed in the last few episodes, you can now create your own meta programming library with all kinds of simple generic functions just like the standard library. You can then combine these lightning fast building blocks into more complex compile time functions and systems. And this is where our final opportunity for optimization lies. Let's again consider the remove if function, which you could consider a simple example of a complex function that is created by composing simpler building blocks, the transform and join functions. Even if transform and join are both lightning fast, if the way we compose them is slow, we still don't have an optimal remove if. Currently, our transform creates a list of lists. To then pass these lists to our join, we need to unpack this output list again. In other words, this intermediate type instantiation is completely useless. Ideally, we'd want the transform to return a parameter pack that we can then pass directly to join. Of course, you can't return a parameter pack. So next time, we'll look at a completely different way of writing meta functions that will allow for free composition without creating intermediate types. An optimization that becomes ever more important the more complex systems you create as it impacts every single function call. I hope you'll join me again next time. Thanks for watching.